This can't be done. It can be, but it'd be a lot better if we had a... <laughs> Only two poses. <laughs> I almost got too many more. <laughs> Some wildlife here, potentially, potentially maybe. Some cows coming up. So see, it's Freeman Rhines. Not a mountain. Great life cycle. Okay. What's that? Ah, uh, it used to be aquaponics. Aquaponics? Aquaponics system. I think somebody did their thesis on it. Hmm. So after that, it's dead. Yeah, I don't really use it anymore. So that shed is mostly storage. That's like sign-in, water, bathroom. Okay. So, what are these rocks for? It's so just for a design or something like that? I think just for design. So, and, design. Uh, so people don't drive right there. Mm -hmm. So many cars are parked here. Yeah, so they do a bunch of labs. So like those buildings are uh, animal science. Animal so science. they'll keep like horses, cows, whatever in there. And then they do like research. Okay. And these are his, right? Yeah, yeah. So they'll bail that normally about like a like a month ago is mm -hmm. when they start bailing hell around here. So they just go with the tractor and it's, it's all the grass and they just bundle it up.
windmill? Oh, really? Yeah, I don't think it really does anything. Does it just in the city? It's just decoration pretty much. It's <laughs> just decoration. Just for sewing only. <laughs> That's probably full of water. That one? Yeah. Basically bulldozing all of the this woody, lots of juniper, weed that, mesquite, etc., and then just pi making piles so that he can open up more, more, more of the savanna, this oak savanna biome, instead of it just getting so thick. Because what's happening is it's got, getting so thick. Remember how we talked about ecological succession, and so those animals are mowing and pruning, pruning, but then when you don't have the animals on the um, you don't have the animals grazing. There's, there's, I mean, that's not how nature works. We've got like bison moving through. We've got herds of animals moving through, being chased by predators, and they're moving, they're grazing, and then they're moving on. And so in this situation, we don't have that. You just have no animals, like Alan Savory talks about, like in what Evelyn was talking about with having like human management. Then it's just like if it's a not totally wild, original wild. And then B, you don't have an A, you don't have humans. Then it can turn into just a total bunch of like overgrowth, right? Because it's not been adaptively managed in terms of grazing, plant grazing, moving them around like that. So, um, so what he's doing is he's clearing all this area, all this like really encroaching um, species, and making big biomass piles. And he was going to go in. It was probably about four years ago now. He's just going to burn all this stuff. Just set fires, right? And both Cassandra and I independently were like, no, wait a minute, we'll figure out something to do. Like, because I'm thinking to myself, wait a minute, that's like great nutrition. We gotta get that back in the soil. I don't know how it's gonna do it, but we're gonna do it. And so, and so then we did some biochar um, demos and we're like, we gotta make biochar. And Chris was sitting there and he was like, so can you do this at scale? Because we were just burning in little barrels. And we're like, yeah. And he's like, no, okay, like, how do you do that? And we're like, well, we gotta figure out how to get a machine or something, you know? And um, we just haven't. I mean, they're expensive. <laughs> the big machines to be able to do, five, like he's got, we've got 500 piles and they've really gotten smaller in size because they've been sitting out here for five years decomposing, just gassing off carbon and just decomposing. But I mean, you can see in this ranch, he's not even like, he's, in, he's not even halfway, not even a third way done of just clearing out a bunch of overgrowth woody material to make into biomass piles that we could make into wood chips to make human soil and, and also pyrolyze to make biochar, you know? And so um, these guys' companies, are like, coming in, that's what they do. And so we're kind of just exploring if we do something here on the ranch at a bigger scale, like a real-world scale, you know? So I just wanted to show you all, like, 
a little bit more of the context because you know this ranch i don't know now that i've seen these plows when i'm not like when like cassandra and i we took a road trip to new mexico um and we saw you'll see them everywhere you start to see them everywhere you start to if see these massive them. piles that ranchers have mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and what do they do they just burn them mm -hmm. so what if they could like actually we could figure out a way that they actually make it them into like a, a product that they just they can put it back into the soil and it regenerates the soil right so that's basically all the research that we're we're working on too. We're working on, you know, how do we how do we just most effectively, efficiently get it back in the soil? So we pass it through animals. And, you know, the animals feed on some of the the biochar, the humus soil. Where we know that like co-composting biochar with with humus soil, uh, or with, with 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 compost. You know, you can't just throw raw biochar on the soil. It just sucks up everything, all the nutrients for a while. Um, the humus soil is a novel technology, which is the you know, stimulating the flow of synthetic bacteria, water producing bacteria, because these game changers for these, you know, really drought prone areas. Oh, we learned that? Yeah. So, out there, we came out here to see all of the different brush pods um, and the different things that she wants to turn into biochar. My turn. Uh, because a lot of landowners, especially in Central Texas, will clear out a lot of their ash junipers um, just to bring back some of the post oak savanna that's native to the region. So they do that because once you take out those large juniper trees, more sun is able to hit the floor uh, where different seeds can emerge. Uh, and so then it, it can help bring back native wildlife um, and just help facilitate like other ecosystem processes. But with all of that wood that they take out, most of the time they just pile it up and burn it. Uh, but that wood can be used as a resource to turn into like biochar. Soon. Now they are making it as a biochar so that they can use it again into the soil. Okay, so that is that is the main thing. But that's very new. There's not many places doing that. Okay, so using a biochar is new in the United States. It's not new because the indigenous populations were using it forever. Yeah, yeah. But in the like commercial farming area that like started mid 1900s for the United States mm -hmm. is. It's new to that system. Okay. So that man from the company, clean site or something like that, uh, basically what they used to do earlier is cleaning the sites. But they now use it, are making biochar mostly. Okay. So I thought he was doing land restoration, uh -huh. but it turns out he was doing land clearing. Which yeah. is like the exact opposite. The exact opposite. Land clearing. I was like, oh, that's not God. So then I was like, oh, no. <laughs> so it's like uh, he's starting to organize or something like that, clearing the land for like neighborhoods. Yeah, for neighborhoods. People will really stay there, making homes or something like that. Oh, yeah, look at that. Vulture. It's big. Hey, vulture. Hello, vulture. And that is crow. So here's the end of our tour. <laughs> Sustainable Farm Western Project. What is that project? Um, this yeah. is all the project. It's all the project. Thank <laughs> you. 